Good afternoon, Floss Tube. This is Michelle at the Striped Rose, and this is my 10th podcast. Today is Saturday, March the 10th. Um, I went ahead and used Random Comment Picker for YouTube um, to get the two winners that are each going to receive two skeins of the Victorian Motto Sampler Threads. And I've got Kay at Come In and Stitch a Little and Kathleen LaMare. So if you will um, get in touch with me on um, YouTube or Instagram, um, and if I don't hear from you in a couple of days, I'll get in touch with you and get your addresses and send those out to you. Um, today is not the whip parade. Um, I don't know what happened on Instagram. I asked if anyone had any questions or requests and somehow people thought that uh, that my basket meant I was doing a whip parade. I'm not doing a whip parade. Um, if you feel cheated, um, I do have a consolation prize. Um, last summer in July or August, I took a video, maybe a 25 or 30 minute video of uh, walking around my mom's house and also rooting around in some bins um, of cross-stitch projects that I had given to her saying, will you have this framed or will you sew this into a pillow for me? And she said yes. And, you know, 15, 20 years later, they're still there in a bin. So um, after I upload this video, I will try to upload that video um, as a consolation prize. I did go through and pull two whips from the whip closet, and one of them is pretty spectacular. So I think you're gonna have some things to look at today. I've got a lot to show you. Um, I really wanna keep this well under an hour, so I'm gonna try not to talk piffle um, like I usually do. Um, the first thing that I wanted to show you is my stitching journal for this year. Um, last year, I um, tried to to keep up with what I was stitching in my day planner. Um, this year I wanted to have a separate, a separate notebook. So I found this notebook probably at Marshall's. Um, and what I did is I put my stitching plan for 2018. So I've already told you this. I wanted to do one block of Hawk Run Hollow Village every two months. It looks like that's gonna be every three months now. Um, one chart per month for Blackbird Designs Garden Clubs. Um, it's March and I'm working on the third chart, so that's good. Um, Santa Sundays and then my regular three-day rotation. And what I did for the three-day rotation is I printed out some calendar pages, free calendar pages. Um, here was January's. They're very pretty. Um, and February's. Um, and on the other side of the paper, I'm just writing down, um, in January, I went to a stitching group, a day at a stitching group. Um, when I've ordered things, I need to send back a skein of floss to 123 Stitch because it wasn't variegated. And it should have been variegated. Um, I needed to mail a check to someone that I bought some charts from, so I just put that on the other, the other side. Um, and then, so this is my March, so I've got my, on Sunday I've got Heaven and Nature Sing, H&N, that's my Sunday stitching piece right now. And then, during the week, I have two periods of three days each, and I just work down my list. Um, some days, um... I cheat because it's my list so if you um, let's see where was a good day so after flora in January I was meant to stitch um, the heart lives where he loves but I um, had fallen out with that piece so I stitched Mary Ann Selena Mott and then the next week I just kept stitching her again because I wanted to. So um, my three-day rotation is my lifeline. It's my promise that everything is going to get worked on and eventually will get done. But um, 
but I can change it around um, when I want to. So that's my stitching journal. I have a section for um, finishes. Um, I've got three actually for this year, even though I've only written down one. And then for starts. And I really need to update that one because for some reason I stopped writing in the middle of that word. So that's my stitching journal. That's what I keep by my side to let me know um, what I'm working on. I've actually already gone and written my rotation um, down for March, I mean for April. I just think these pages are so pretty especially for free pages, and May, um, so I just work down the list. And as things get finished, um, something new is supposed to take their place. All right, so stitching journal giveaway. I've got my handy dandy um, podcasting pages that I made up to keep me on track. So I wanted to tell you about the tea um, that I'm drinking. Um, my husband was gone, it seemed like, for two weeks straight. And it, was, it was kind of a nightmare. Things happen when he's gone. This time it was the washing machine, um, the car, and the cat ran away. Um, one of the indoor cats ran away outside. Um, so this is a mug my mom gave me. And it took me a really long time to figure out what those were. Do you see what those are? Those are cats. It took me a while. Um, one of the places that he went was Savannah. And he went to our favorite tea shop, the Tea Room in Savannah. And got my favorite, well, hello, darling. No, you don't eat tea. Uh, my favorite tea is Emperor's Bride. It's a black tea. Um, it has um, bits of... I was going to show you. Bits of pineapple in it, bits of orange peel. Um, it's very, very good, and it's almost gone. I only use about two teaspoons um, in a 16-ounce mug. Um, I think my older daughter uses about half a cup, so it's going fast. But Emperor's Bride is really yummy, too. It's a beautiful shop. It, it has an art, art deco art an art deco flavor to it is that art deco or art nouveau those letters um and it's attached to a bookstore with cats so it's a tea room with a bookstore with cats and it has um, a little room where you can go and sit and if i could sit there and knit or cross stitch i would um i would never leave um the girls love it. It's too expensive to take the girls in there, though, because they want all the tea. All right, so finishes. Um, I feel like I'm going through this really, really quick, Lee, and I'll be done in no time, but that's probably, probably not the case. All right, so my garden club, I think I showed you... Well, the last time I podcast was January 15th, so I probably had not yet finished the first one, which is Basket of Cherries. Um, it has these, I don't know if you can see the specialty stitch. Basket of Cherries. Um, the only color that I changed, I changed the blue. I think it was aged pewter. My aged pewter was just too gray, so I picked a bluer one. The second one that I did um, was block number two, which is orchard, um, apple orchard. And this is the one that just to me sticks out like a sore thumb from the whole piece. But I like my colors better. Um, I changed the reds and the pinks a little. I like my green better. In the picture, the green is almost um, a fluorescent. Um, so I'm doing four across, so one, two, three, and four. So I started number five down here. I started just a bit of number six because I started panicking that maybe I wasn't lining them up correctly. So I wanted to line up, I wanted to start two just to make sure everything in this corner met correctly. So this moth 
has a nice little pattern in it. It's got a like a tulip flower um, in the bottom lobes of the wing. I don't know if butterfly wings have lobes. Um, and then the blue pattern will be repeated here. So that's my goal is to finish that for, it would really be good to go ahead and finish an extra one so that in December I'm not, um, of course the dog needs to go out. Um, so in December I'm not trying to finish up December's because I'll want to do whatever um, Christmas stitch along is going or something like that. All right, so those were my first two finishes. It's all in one piece, but they're two separate charts that I finished, so it's two finishes. Um, the second thing I finished was an old work in progress that I worked back into my rotation. This is from <clears throat> Handwork Samplers, and it is an old one. It's copyright 1998, so there's no telling how long I had it. Well, I know exactly how long I had it. No, I don't. Um, I really started reading blogs in 2007. I did. I started reading blogs in 2007, and at some point, Paulette Stewart went to some, I don't know if it was Silver Needle or The Attic, and she took tons and tons of pictures like she does, and um, I saw this, this sampler. So the only thing that I've changed here is that at the top it says, but never like these posies shall wither Flora's truth. And like I said, I don't know what Flora's truth is. I don't know what my truth is most of the time. So I decided to play it safe and change the words to God's truth. Um, so here it is. Um, these flowers were filled in with white, and so I went ahead... 3866 I think so I went ahead and filled in um, the blue flower centers with white too because I thought it would look undone that looks undone to me it looks like it should have the lighter green um, but that's how it was that is how it was charted so that is flora Virginia Holmes sampler and I've got all my information at the bottom that I'm not going to show you, so. um, but I did put a picture, a full picture of that on Instagram. So that, that feels good to have, that was from the whip closet, that was in the whip closet for a very long time. Um, so the next thing, um, right after I did my video in January, where I think I showed you a whole basket full of red samplers. I realized that what I really wanted to do was not a red sampler, but a blue sampler. That really surprised me. So I was going through my um, sampler and antique needlework quarterlies, and I found this, and it looks so simple. At the same time, I had been looking on Pinterest at primitive Christmas and primitive winter decor and there was a picture of a shelf a rustic shelf over a door and stacked and just sort of sitting on the shelf were a collection of four or five simple alphabet samplers worked in uh, maybe a dark brown or a black thread and it I just thought it was it had some greenery um, on the shelf and it just looked so stunning in its simplicity and so I really thought well I just want to do a simple uh, monotone sampler and I was looking through my magazines and I found this one and I thought oh that looks really really simple no <laughs> this is a very complex um, design um, and let me you may have already heard me whine about this um, I did mine in DMC, except for one of the colors. Um, one of the colors that it called for the DMC conversion was a 931 or a 930, must have been a 931, and it just didn't work. And so I got this beautiful, beautiful Gloriana 
um, slate blue, number 124. Um, it's really, really pretty. Um, I do use Thread Heaven with this color because it doesn't seem to lie as smoothly um, without Thread Heaven, but I really, really like this one color. So it's all DMC. Um, well, that's not true either. I used this top alphabet um, was charted for um, 3371 was the DMC conversion. And I didn't think that dark brown looked right. So I was looking at my dark, just dark, really dark blues. And I found 823, DMC 823. And then um, I had bought a lot of anchor blues. And um, I noticed that the anchor blue that most closely matched 823 was just the tiniest, tiniest bit darker than 823. Probably it's identical. I just thought it was darker. So I decided to use that. So that's actually a very deep blue. So what I mean by very complex, this sampler, um, it's small. It's a small sampler, but it is absolutely packed. So under this first alphabet, ooh, I didn't even show that. Under this first alphabet, you have um, four-sided stitch. And you also have an alphabet down here in four-sided stitch. Four-sided stitch is not a problem. Um, but then you have, what, what did I say, 190-something queen stitches. So each of these flowers is made up of four queen stitches. I don't know how I could get it to... Maybe I'll try to insert a picture there. Um, each of these flowers is made up of four queen stitches. Um, and I think there's 48 of them. I said I was not gonna save the queen stitches till last. Um, and, and I didn't, I've done almost, you know, about two thirds of them. Um, and then this alphabet down here is eyelet stitch, which I, I like, I like eyelet stitches. Um, and then her name, Mary Ann Selena Mott. Um, I've said before that I don't really like to put somebody else's name on a sampler because it's my work. Um, it's my work. I want the credit for it. I changed on Flora's. I changed it. And I put my information um, and where I live now. But this one... Um, just for a, uh, several different reasons, I wanted to put her name on it because um, I like those red schoolgirl, those red French con schoolgirl convent samplers, and I feel like they need that that French name on them. That's part of the design. Um, I sort of felt that about her, but the real reason is because, and I'm going to talk about this for several minutes. When I was dyeing this, I just wanted to darken it up a little bit. Um, you probably can't see because of the shadows. It's really splotchy and I don't stitch on distressed or vintage fabric yet. Um, and I'm going to tell you why. But because this one was so splotchy, um, you can't tell. You're not going to be able to tell. I can tell the splotches. I thought, well, I don't want to sign my name on a splotchy fabric. I'm going to sign her name on the splotchy fabric because that was from 1827. That was a long time ago. I'm sure it would be splotchy by now. Um, so I'm going to tell you why I don't like, why I'm hesitant. It's the color of guilt to me, and I'll, I'll explain that. But first of all, I want you to look at this again. This is just, it's very small, but it's very complex. There's a lot of different stitches in it. The colors, when I pulled the colors for this, you know, I pulled the DMC colors and I thought, this is never going to work. This is awful, especially, you know, this color in the diamonds that most of the name is, if you hear the dog crying, there's nothing wrong with the dog. He wants to go outside. He's just come in from outside. He's fine. Um... I thought these colors are just never going to work together, but they do. 
Um, I'm really glad I changed that to that 823. Um, so anyways, that is in, I wanted to tell you which um, sampler and antique needlework quarterly this is. Will you please let Hector out, please, sweetie? Um, winter 2009, because I know a lot of you have gotten the, um, the, uh, the DVDs, the Sampler and Antique Needlework DVDs. Um, there's a couple of more things. There's a nice article about the, um, about South Carolina samplers. That's a South Carolina sampler. There's an article about thimbles. Um, there's this sampler. And it's funny, I look at that and I think, oh, that is so garish, but that's probably um, the bright colors that a lot of samplers originally were. Um, and then there's this modern interpretation um, of a birth sampler. If you were just going to get this one, I wanted to show you what was in this one. Um, and then there's this sampler and an article about um, this family or group of samplers. So that is uh, Mary Ann Selena Mott sampler. And so I wasn't real happy with how I had dyed that fabric. And then I ordered some more fabric from, I ordered it from ABC Stitch. And I got this Newcastle um, Light Mocha. And I wanted to get another color, maybe that was a little darker. And so I wasn't even thinking. I didn't do any research. I just ordered another one they had that was called Country Mocha. Because I thought maybe Country Mocha would be a little dirtier than City Mocha. I, I don't know. Um, you probably all know that it is mottled, variegated, distressed. Because a lot of you like that. And you know, the fabric itself is pretty. And I look at your distressed and your hand dyed and your vintage fabrics and I think, the fabric is pretty. I would make curtains out of that. I like the fabric. But I just don't know that I want to stitch on it. Of course, I realized a few minutes ago, the back, this is printed. So the back side is, um, is solid. And the back side is actually a tiny bit lighter than the light country, than the light mocha itself. So I think what I want to do, um, I had called ABC Stitch and I said, oh, I don't want that one. I just realized it's, it's variegated and I don't want it. And I got sent it anyways. And I thought, well, I could do, maybe it's cold outside on here because that's not an heirloom sampler piece. And um, I could also do Sally Spencer. Um, the Birds of a Feather piece that Linda Joe and Nicole's Needlework um, and somebody else is doing because that um, would go well on here. Um, so I'm going to use the fabric, um, but I just I just have issues. I, I love African Violets. I said I wasn't going to talk Piffle, but there's going to be a little bit of Piffle. Um, I love African Violets, but it took me years to be able to grow an African violet with variegated leaves. Um, and now I love variegated leaves, um, but it's really hard for me. Okay, so here's the piffle bit about why I don't like distressed fabrics. And I'm gonna show you something, and it's gonna be pretty good. But first I'm gonna talk piffle. At the end of this month, I turn 45. At the end of April, my grandmother turns 90. So it's just really been blowing my mind that at my age, my grandmother became a grandmother. Um, and um, anyway, my great grandparents, my grandmother's parents, um, my grand great grandfather died in 1978. My great grandmother died in, I can't remember, 1987 or 1988. Um, and the house, their house, has been maintained by my grandmother. Um, this whole time, so 30 years. Um, I have probably only been in that house twice, maybe three times, I think only twice in the past 30 years because my grandmother will never let me go down there because I take things. Um, I'm not a kleptomaniac. I know I'm taking them. 
I want to take them. It's like the greatest flea market on earth. Um, there's never been a minimalist in our family until my sister, my younger sister came along. Um, nobody else is a minimalist. So going to my grandmother's house, going to my great grandmother's house, it's just like the greatest flea market in the world. So this summer, so I like to get souvenirs when I'm at my grandmother's house. So this summer, my grandmother and I, this past summer, my grandmother and I were crocheting together. And I said, look at this little bitty crochet hook. It's like a bee. And I use it when I'm knitting socks and I drop a stitch and you could just re-knit very simply stockinette stitch with the crochets, crochet. Um, do you want to come and be on the camera? And I said, look, look how small my crochet hook is. And she said, oh, I've got smaller hooks than that. And I said, I bet you don't. And she said, I bet I do. And she went and got them. And now I have them. Look how tiny the holes are. Can you even see how tiny these, uh, these crochet hooks are? They're tiny. And I just wanted them. And then I, I took some of her thimbles. So I like to go and get little souvenirs. So my mom likes to do that too. And she told me, she said, oh, look what I found at your grandmother's house. And I got it for you. And it was like this old knitting, um, like, like my grandmother knit at one time. Um, so it's like an old knitting thing. But my favorite thing is when they have the price tag still on them. So my mom um, brought me these hoops. And don't get excited, they're not duchess or Empire, or Empress, or Queen, but they have these wonderful, they're, they're very nice, they're very, they're made in Taiwan, but they're very nice, they're very smooth, but look at the tag, I love, this tag is Walmart, a dollar eighteen. isn't that nice? Now, I think these are actually my mother's, because the tag on this one says AFES, um, my dad was in the military, so this must have been bought at the PX. So these must have been my mother's. So they were my mother's. They wound up at my grandmother's house. My mother swiped them back and then said, oh, do you want them? So that's what we do. We just swap the crapola around. These will never wind up at my sister's house. She would never. She does not swap crapola with us. Um, so... I just think these are fun and they're smooth and they're nice. Even 30 years ago, you could buy nicer um, wooden hoops at Walmart. I don't care that they're not Duchess or Queen or Empress or whatever they are. Um, I don't even care that I don't use hoops. I just think that is such a pretty shape. I could frame something in it. I could hang them on my wall and be perfectly happy. So I pick up souvenirs at my grandmother's house, which is why she doesn't let me go to my great grandmother's house. The last time I went to my great-grandmother's house, I picked up major souvenirs. I picked up this. I don't know if you can see my back door. Now, I know why this fabric is this color. Because the board that it's on has eaten, the acid from the board has eaten it. So that's why distressed fabric. I mean, look, and that's some nice distressed hand dyed fabric right there. Um, it's eaten into it and I don't know what to do. I have another one. I don't know whether at this point, um, it's enough to simply take these out of the frames and away from that board. I didn't plan this part well. Um, or does it need to be sprayed with something? I don't know. So if you can tell me um, what I need to do, I mean, they're framed with this paper on the back that needs to come off, but the board or whatever paper has, I mean, now that's, you would buy that. There, everybody else would buy this fabric looking like that. That looks like some really expensive hand-dyed fabric, but that is where acid has eaten, oh well, and just dirt. So, um, when I, obviously my grandmother saw me get these out of my great grandmother's house and, um, she just said, don't you dare hang those up in your house. I'd be embarrassed to death. Don't you dare hang them up because the fabric looks dirty. Um, now I have the pattern for this, 
because I picked it up on one of my souvenir trips to my grandmother's house. I think it said, I don't know where it is right now, but I think it said like 40 cents um, and it had a store name on it. And a couple of years ago, I binge watched um, Murder, She Wrote with Jessica Lansbury while the girls were at dance in the afternoons and I was waiting. I would just sit there and watch um, Murder, She Wrote. And in one of the houses, I swear, I paused it a million times, I swear this exact same um, cross-stitch design is hanging on one of the walls. But so this is why I'm hesitant to use um, hand-dyed fabrics because it reminds me that I have my grandmother's cross stitch and I need to do something with it. And it looks like hand dyed fabric because it's dirty and um, acid damaged. So tell me what I need to do. Is it simply a matter of removing the needlework from the board that it's stretched on and stretching it on an acid free board and putting it back in the frame, um, or does something else need to be done? Um, I have no idea if those fabrics are color fast. I wouldn't want to wash it, but this is beautiful, and my grandmother made it, um, but she won't let me hang it on the wall because, because it looks hand-dyed, and I tried to tell her that that's all the rage now, and it didn't work. So that's my long story about how I why I have a hard time stitching on hand-dyed fabrics. Was that too much piffle? Um, because my grandmother doesn't like it, and because I know I've got to do something with those. Okay, so, um, there's my piffle. It's very cloudy outside today. All right, so I have lots more to show you. Don't worry. Lots more to show you. Um, all right, now I'm going to show you what I've been working on for the past two months. I'm not going to show you the things that, um, that really haven't changed that much. For instance, I'm working on The Heart Lives Where He Loves. I showed it to you in my last video. I am still just filling in the red around those yellow letters, which is what I'm going to be doing probably for months and months. I wanted to show you my Santa Sunday piece, and I'm very sorry this is an out of, st uh, uh, out of print Blackbird's Designs. And like um, Suzette from Primitive Stitcher said, you know, why, why do they have these out of print designs when the designers are still in business? The designers are still in business, they're still printing charts, they're still giving charts to their distributors. Why won't they let us pay them the, the $30 for the book um, instead of letting the hawkers on eBay, you know, charge $70 or whatever for it. It's gotten very dark. So this is the design, Let Heaven and Nature Sing. And it is in this out of print book with Needle and Thread by Blackbird Designs. And um, Southern Stitcher, she used to be Tinsley Mummy or Mumsy. Tinsley Mummy. She was very, very generous and sent me some of the out of production threads from Old Willow Stitchery. Now remember that name because I'm going to show you some older finishes in a few minutes and one of them is stitched entirely in Old Willow Stitchery. These were lovely threads, um, but they're not being um, produced anymore. It's the details about Blackbird Designs. It's just the, the strange little bitty details. So here is my piece. It's on 40 count linen. It's very small. This vase or urn has these little, I wish I could, I wonder if I could if I touch the screen. Can I touch the screen? It has these little eyelet stitches in there. I think I'm gonna to have to put a picture in. And the eyelet stitches aren't even lined up on top of each other. Some of them are staggered. And it just, like architect, ooh, 
architectural um, uh, architectural interest. Um, they're just lovely. Um, they're just lovely. So that's what I'm doing on Santa Sunday. I would really like to finish that this month. And then I would like to start on one of these Little House Needleworks hometown holidays. There's the church, and there is the train. Those are my two favorites from the series. I'd like to do more. I'd like to finish them as um, the cubes because I'd like to sit them to sit them up. All right, so after that, I don't know if I've shown you my autumn piece. I think I might have. Um, this is a reprint of Prairie Schooler's um, Harvest Time. And I'm doing this because Michelle Farm Girl Stitcher did, is, did it or is doing it. And I also want to do the Home for the Holidays Christmas one and also the Village Green one. So please, Prairie Schooler, please reprint those and take my money because I want to give you my money. And this is, I'm doing it on 40 count. And that's all I've, uh, all I've got. I don't, I'm sitting here pushing things like, I, like I know what I'm doing. Um, so it's not going to be, I mean, it's going to be longer than that. I didn't go all the way across yet. But it's not very big. And it's all in DMC, which is perfectly fine. Perfectly fine with me. And my favorite, one of my favorite bags. I've really messed up the lights. I've really messed up the lights. Um, Susan Rambo really looks about the same. I've just been filling in grass. Uh, oh, I don't think, I think I showed you my Hawk Run Hollow piece. Um, the very start of it. Jerry, I can't get the light to look good. I um I think I had just started it. Now I remember when um Farm Girl Stitcher did this, she changed this to a sun. Um I'm leaving it to me it looks like curtains or drapes and it and since it's this first block, it's like you're pulling back the curtain on the scene before you, which is this village. That's how I see it. Um, I'm using mostly DMCs. I'm substituting some other colors. I got the Dinky Dyes, um, silk pack when they had their little leftover odds and ends silk pack. And I'm using the green, all this green right here and here is Caronda, maybe? I'm not sure. Um, it's really, really nice. So I'm just um, pulling colors, some Victoria Motto sampler threads, some DMCs, some over dyed cottons, but I didn't finish the first block in the first two month period. Maybe I'll finish it in three months, then I would have four done this year. Um, we'll have to see. Um, the next thing that I really would like to finish this month um, is Earthly Treasures by Plum Street Samplers, and I want to get it finished so that I can do another Plum Street Sampler in its place. I'm almost finished. Remember, I restarted it on 40 count. Um, I'm sorry about the light. Um, so I've just got that bottom half and then the face of the angel, which is one over one, which I don't love. To do and I'm just skipping around on the words my grandmother always asks me when I show her things when I showed her that Victoria I mean uh, Mary Ann Selena she's like why why are you all why don't you just work straight down I don't know I just don't so that's really really pretty I'm gonna um, put it on my red sampler wall um, the promise looks about the same as I showed it to you before. I didn't show you Daughters of Longbourn. I talked about it. I don't think I showed it to you. I got a Victoria Motto sampler thread called Banana. And so I've really been working on um, the house. 
I've probably worked on it twice, two three-day periods since I saw you last. And um, I've been working on the all the house that's done is what I've been doing. And the vine um, around the house. So it's not, this is the, um, the height of it. It says ABCs. It has the ABCs across the, the bottom. Um, but I think I'm going to put Daughters of Longbourn um, maybe across the bottom instead. So I've just got Jane and um, Lizzie. Oops. Threads are all over the place. But that Victoria Motto sampler thread was really the perfect perfect thread thread. I think it was called banana or banana cream. All right, getting through this. Um, and then I've worked on Mary Cotton. I worked on her last week. Um, Mary Cotton is just weird. I know um, Emily C. at Eclectic Possessions. I don't know if she started on it or talked about starting on it. It's just weird. Um, it's worked in needlepoint silks, and I'm using the DMC conversion. Um, but those are just some weird, I mean, even in the, with the needlepoint inks, you can see this is a pink tree, which is fine. Um, pink trees don't bother me. Pink leaves don't bother me. Um, but it's just, all together, it's just, this is where I am. That skirt probably took me mon uh, months and months. That skirt just about did me in. Um, I've recently finished the skirt. Um, last week, I was just working on this tree. Um, but that skirt, it just took forever. That is a big skirt. Um, so I'm working on the DMC. I'm using the DMC conversion, but I'm changing some things here and there. So that's where that is. Um, I would really like to get it finished before the end of the year. Okay, so those are the things that I've been working on. All right, so the next thing I wanted to show you is from the whip closet. I, I came across this when I was looking for something. And I thought, oh, I, I really like that. And I'm so glad that when I did it, I did all the purple and all this green because who knows if the dye lot would match, would match up now. Um, the picture is not good. And this is a chart by Willow Hill Samplings from 2008. But Willow Hill Samplings has re-released a lot of, I don't know um, how many, of their charts. So if you go to... WillowHillSamplings.net. You can get this a hard copy for ten dollars or a download copy um, for eight dollars. It's called Heart and Hand, and it reads, "My heart and hand I give um, to thee," and it's a lot prettier in person. Um, even with my bad lighting, you can see. Um, I think that purple is Wisconsin Woods. It's really, really pretty pretty. So I have to do the man and the two the two topiaries and the one over one writing. Um, and that could be a finish from the whip closet. All right. So now I wanted to show you some older, older finishes. Um, everybody was talking about the Gift of Stitching digital magazine. When that magazine came out, I had a subscription. I had a subscription to it for a long time. I have no idea which hard drive um, those files are on. Absolutely no idea. So I can't tell you exactly. I wanted to show you some finishes that I did from the digital magazine, but I don't know um, which edition they were because I don't have the printout copy and I don't know where my... Uh, my copies on the computer are. I think that this was from the Gift of Sh Stitching magazine. It's by the Sampler Girl. Um, there's nothing like staying home for real comfort, Jane Austen. 
Um, I don't know if this is something that you could order from Tanya, the sampler girl. Um, I don't know if she has an Etsy shop right now or if she has, she's redesigning her um, website. But Tanya, the sampler girl, designed this. Um, uh, I know I stitched it on even weave. I don't know when. It looks like those are satin stitches. All right, so that was, I think that this was from the gift of stitching. This definitely was from the gift of stitching. There was a series of, I don't remember how many charts. I only stitched one of them. Um, it was the life of Joan of Arc. So this may have been the first chart and the last chart would have been her being burned at the stake. Um, both my daughters have an absolute horror of Joan of Arc being burned by the st at the stake. I mean, it's a horrible thing, but there's lots of saints stories that are horrible, but this one, maybe because she was a young girl, this one really, um, they just don't want to talk about her. Um, but they're, all the charts in the series are like this, like a, a woodcut image. Um, they're lovely. I don't know why I only decided to do one. There's so much, so much detail in the background. Um, I mean, the angel and Joan of Arc are very detailed, but the background is just beautiful. Um, and I don't know which edition this was in. It was, it would have been in several because there were at least four. Um, that's really beautiful. I'd, I'd actually like to find those again and, and do more of them. It's really pretty. Really, really, really pretty. The last one is one of my favorites. This was in the Gift of Stitching magazine. It's called Scottish Companion Sampler. I always like Scottish samplers. There was an original, no, no, no. There was a reproduction sampler called the Symes Sampler, maybe. It was the same size and shape. It had some bees on it. It was a reproduction of a, sam of a Scottish sampler. It was designed in old willow stitchery thread. Um, and then this was designed in, a, in another edition as a companion piece for it. Um, and if you see, I, female initials on Scottish samplers, um, the female keep their maiden name um, on Scottish samplers. So that's why the MT was mine and MB was um, Mary Margaret's got some. I mean, you can just see how lovely the colors in those peacocks and in that basket. Those I love those old willow stitchery threads. Um, so an eyelet stitch. Whew, I got to clean up the back. You can see all my threads. Eyelet stitch alphabet. Now, usually a Scottish sampler would have been red and green, but the pink and green doesn't bother me at all. Just beautiful colors in those threads. Um, this detail, the G, the M, and the peacocks, sometimes that's my profile picture. I, I think on Pinterest that's my profile picture. But this was the Scottish Companion Sampler. And that is an absolute favorite. Um, I don't have a date on it. But I probably stitched that one as soon as I got the magazine. Because that, I just love the colors. I love everything about that. Okay, now I want to show you some charts that I've gotten. I haven't bought a lot um, because I've got a lot to keep me busy. I've bought a lot of thread and a lot of fabric, but I haven't bought a lot of charts because I have tons of them. I've got 10 minutes to keep this under an hour. All right, I'm not a Lizzie Kate stitcher. Um, I have, uh, some old Lizzie Kate charts. Some of them were mine. Some of them were my mom's. I just don't really stitch them. Um, I enjoy seeing your stitched things. I love the more, less, um, piece, you know, love more, hate less. I love that piece. Um, I love everything that, um, Chelsea and Priscilla do, but it's just not, I'm not getting in on the, um, the frenzy except for one thing. I showed you this in the fall when I 
did I showed you all my autumn pieces that I had stitched um, this was oh, I don't even have the chart um, it must have been autumn basket snippet and it must have been number s five three or five something, maybe five, four, I don't know. Well, over the years, I had collected the summer basket, which I really like. I like sunflowers. I'm not a yellow person. I'm not a yellow flower person. The forsythia is blooming right now. and I gag when I see forsythia. I can't handle forsythia. But I like yellow sunflowers in the summer and yellow daffodils in the spring. That's me done with yellow. Um, I really like this one, the basket, uh, poinsettias. So I thought, well, it's my last chance. I need to get the spring basket just so I have all four. It's the only one I don't like. I found it, but I don't like it. I don't know why, but I've got it all. So that's my, that was my Lizzie Kate um, buying frenzy. All right, so the next thing, I, um, Ellen Chester, of with my needle she was having a dish stash sale sale and I ordered two charts from her um, this one you can find it on Amazon um, samplers of friendship and love there are four samplers in here I bought it for this one right here and this one down here I really really like those um, you can see that yellow rose one all right, and then I bought um, Katrine Thompson, 1858, and if you follow Ellen Chester on um, Instagram, you've probably seen her do this recently. Look, a red sampler. And I'm not sure if that's Adam and Eve or Eve and Eve down there. Um, they have different hairdos, but they're both wearing the same dress, so I don't know. Um... And she also sent me a, a floss card with that. So that got me thinking about Ellen Chester and with my needle. And then yesterday when people were asking to see my whips, I remembered a long time ago, I started an Ellen Chester whip. A really really big one and I really wanted to show it to you um, because I was thinking about Ellen Chester um, but also because when if you watch it's kids it's Kismet's uh, most recent video Diana's most recent video she talks about going to the Hawk Run Hollow stitching group and someone bringing a box of charts and she explains where the charts come from came from but she mentions that she bought this uh, that she got the, bought this Agnes Scott uh, reproduction sampler, and it seems like there are one or two other copies. So I'm not sure who got those one or two other copies, but I wanted to show um, to show mine because it looks beautiful here. Um, it's a Scottish reproduction sampler, um, but it really really looks nice worked up. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure what fabric I used. At the time, I had a local needlework LNS. So I probably bought what it was ever called, what was called for, called for. Actually, I'm doing this on 32 count, I bet, because it's um because I'm using two two threads. So you can see those really ornate letters which you see on Scottish samplers and on Dutch samplers. Let me get the thread. Oh, I can't find it. So that's A, B, C. Are these initials or are these? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? My very favorite stitch, not at all, the queen stitch. Um, these are queen stitch stitches on this band um, then they'll go up this side and the joy of these queen stitches is you have to start you know you new colors because they're different colors um, I love these flowers down the side 
I love the little, um, there's that vase. You see that vase with flowers on a lot of Scottish samplers. Um, this house, I like that. And this vase is beautiful. Isn't it funny to have such a colorful flower vase? And so I don't know if this one faded and, or washed out or if, um, I don't know what the story is on that. Um, so it's really, really pretty and I'm working it in DMC colors. Um, really really pretty and I guess initials would go under these crowns and I think when someone was deceased you would put black initials for them so I'll probably put my own family initials under there so this one is um, I mean it's pretty spectacular I think I mean even if you just wanted to do that right there as a small That'd be pretty, that'd be pretty intense. That would be a nice small to give someone. I, w I bet you could put it in a round, make it round. That would be a really, really nice small. But um, that's a nice one if you have a chance to get your hands on, on that one. So then I um, started thinking of, of um, Ellen Chester. And I found this one on eBay, um, and I really like what this says. Count the day lost, whose low descending sun views from thy hand, no worthy act done. I really like that. I would not do it on black, or maybe that's navy. I think I would just do it on a, a sampler neutral. I might have to darken up this um, building there. But I really think that's a lovely sentiment and a very nicely balanced um, sampler. Um, another Ellen Chester that I've had for years. In fact, I think this might be my mom's. Um, be ye always kind and true. That one's nice. And then this one, this is the other, only other Ellen Barrett I have. And my daughter was about 10. My older daughter was about 10. And we went into the cross stitch store when I had a local cross stitch store. And she begged me to get this. Well, and I can't even show it to you because the front page isn't here. Anyway. Maidens of the Sea. It's a, um, a huswife, I guess. But it had all these little pieces. It's mermaids. If you want to look it up it had all these little pieces um, that went with it I have no idea where the uh, the cover page to that is so I didn't realize it wasn't in there but anyways if you haven't ever looked at with my needle and thread charts um, you should then my friend pot Lori at mischievous stitches she told me once that I was an enabler, and I told her that was the pot calling the kettle black. So um, she mentioned that she had been looking up threads of gold charts, and I found this one on Stash Unloading. I forget to look there sometimes. Um, I think Senorita Stitches. I think I bought this from her. It says, It is better to hear the rebuke of the wise than to hear the song of fools. Um, I liked... I like the verse. I like, I like these little houses up here. So I got that one. Um, that was I th that might have been last year. Um, Christina Batley sampler. That's a thread of gold piece. Christina Batley. Batley sampler. Um, that's a nice one. Now, this next one. As soon as I show it to you. Pause it and start hunting, because this this one blew my mind. Louisa Serrett, look at that. Let me get it out of here. Whew. This one has everything. Adam and Eve, and boy are they chunky. They have got some major calves. 
a nice honeysuckle border, a red deer. Now, you see that little building right there? Um, that's the same building that's here. And I meant to look it up and figure out what that's called. I'm sure it's called something. I have my book of um, sampler motifs. Oh, here it is. My sampler motif and symbolism dictionary. Um, I don't know if it's in here or not. I'll probably have to find it. Um, I'll let you know if I find it. Um, but it's a nice little checkerboard. Um, then you have somebody being carried in their, their litter. Louisa Serrett. Is that not beautiful? That's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So that was my uh, threads of gold. Binge. Then, at some point, I ordered, remember I told, I showed you some Merrily Beans patterns last time? I'm not real crazy about this one. It must have been very inexpensive. They're like in, you know, modern clothes. So that's kind of fun. I can't remember if I showed you this or not. I got this on Stash Unload. I love that cat. And then I can't remember if I showed you Theron Traditions. I think I got this last year. I thought that one was really pretty. So those aren't all things that I bought in the past two months. I didn't buy all those charts in the past two months. Um, some of them I've had and just haven't, um, haven't showed you. All right, so the last thing, well, I wanted to show you um, some St. Patrick's Day things, and I actually wanted to finish them for you, but I didn't want to finish simple, primitive St. Patrick's Day pieces with brightly colored leprechaun shamrock fabric that I was finding in Joann's. I really wanted um, green ticking, because Priscilla and Chelsea have me brainwashed into ticking for everything, but I couldn't find green ticking. And then on Etsy, I found this simple green um, stripe that looks like green ticking, and it's from the Green Gables, the Anne of Green Gables fabric series. And I ordered it, and it just hasn't come yet. So that's what I want to back all these with. This is from one of the Prairie Schooler um, All Through the Year series, where it gives you 12 charts, one for each month. There's two charts like that one and two um, this is from one of them and this is from the other so I'd like to make those into just simple pillows with that green ticking esque Anne of Green Gables fabric this was from the sampler girl years and years and years ago sorry Tanya I'm telling people to go and ask you for your old charts May your thoughts be as let's see. May your may your thoughts be as glad as shamrocks. May your heart be as light as a song. Now this is on thirty-two count linen. I'm not crazy. Thirty-two count Zweigart linen used to be thick and plump, almost like an even weave, and now it is thin and loose. Same orange edging through it. It's changed a lot. That's why I don't like thirty-two count anymore. Because right now, it's very gauzy. It used to be very thick and plump. Um, sorry, that was my little rant. So this is a sampler girl. Um, and I don't know if it was meant to be a needle book. But I'm just going to do it as a pillow like that when the green stuff comes. And then I showed you this last year. I did this last year. Um, what I want to do is uh, mount this on foam core, foam board, and then put it on top of a piece of the green ticking covered foam board, and then put them in that silver tray that I got months and months ago. Um, this is one of the heart, one of the six heartstring samplery, um, let us be truly thankful. This is one of the other ones I've done. That's Valentine's. I know I showed you, um, in my last video, I showed you the autumn one that I had just finished in December. And then this is the one that I want to start. 
Um, and then there is a Americana one for the 4th of July. And then there's a Christmas winter one. I would like to do this one and keep this one up all year um, and just replace it with these others as it comes up. But if I don't have a, a chart for a month, I would just put this one back in. So I, I need to start that. So those are my St. Patrick's Day things that are waiting on that green fabric. Um, really quickly, so I want to start, let us be truly thankful. I want to start this <clears throat> Rose Garden Blackbird Designs, one color of thread, Jakey's Brown. Don't know why that's brown. No idea why that's brown. Um, I want to do that just to have that as a not in my rotation or anything but just to have it as something to pick up and pick it up at will my mom gave me this last year for my birthday so a year ago I'd really like to start that I've told you this a million times but I'm really gonna do it as soon as I finish treasures earthly treasures I'm starting this I've got uh, the overdyed threads I just have to decide if it can go on that light mocha or on the reverse of the country mocha or if I need to um, dye, dye platinum just a little darker. I've showed you this a thousand times and still haven't started it. I was actually, it's um, from this sampler, summer 2010. Um, I was actually supposed to start it last week. When I finished Flora, this was supposed to fill in the rotation. And you know why I didn't start it? Because I didn't feel like dyeing the fabric. Um, because I have platinum fabric, but I think it needs to be just a tiny bit darker. But I can't tell if light mocha would be too dark. Um, so instead of starting it, I just stitched on something else. But I'm, I'm going to start this because this needs to go in Flora's spot. Or, I finally got this chart that I had ordered at Christmas. This needs to go in Flora's spot. One of those two needs to go in Flora's spot. Thousand Hills is definitely going in Treasures. Jerry, will you bring me that... Um, Blanket, crochet blanket. So I finished, um, I've still been knitting. I knit socks. I finished a pair of socks the other day. Um, I, I love to knit socks. I knit socks all the time. If I'm not cross stitching, I'm knitting socks. Um, but I don't usually, I don't know, they either go straight on my feet or go, they go straight in the drawer. I don't usually have a ta-da moment for socks. Not that socks aren't fantastic. Um, but I just don't usually do a ta-da moment. But I am going to do a ta-da moment for that Moreland blanket by Attic24. Um, I ordered the yarn pack from Wool Warehouse last January because that's when the, um, that's, thank you, that's when the um, crochet along uh, started. So I'll try to put in a full length picture. But if you're not familiar with it, it's Attic 24. It's She either lives near the Yorkshire Moors or she goes there a lot. So it starts at the ground and then it goes up the grass and the rocks and the heather. Um, and it goes on and on and on until at the top it gets to the sky. And this is um, her own pattern. I mean, there's wave patterns all over the internet. And they're probably not that different. But this is called, she um, calls this the neat wave. Um, she gives instructions for it on her blog. She gives photo by photo, step-by-step um, -step pictures. And she'll, she'll poke a needle into the exact stitch to show you what two from the hook means. You know, um, start your double crochets two from the hook well she'll say that means this one right here um, she does English crochet terms and American crochet terms are different so in America we would say um, a single crochet 
they call it a double crochet. What we would call a double crochet, they would call a treble. Um, it's okay, you can do it. It's like um, you, uh, my friend Angela, she was doing the same one, Mommy Lawyer 6. She, on her piece of paper, she went through and marked out every British term and replaced it with the American term. Um, I think of it like when you're speaking German or you're speaking another language, you just, you think, you get in that mindset. So if I'm doing an American crochet project, I think, okay, I'm doing American terms. If I'm doing a British one, I, st I think in British terms. I think of it more as, you know, being fluent in a language. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't matter what you do, as long as you stitch it. I mean, it doesn't really matter. As, as long as the information gets in and comes out and makes this, um, it doesn't. My children, um, oh, here I go, talking pestle again. My children learned music, piano, and singing by the solfege method, do, re, mi, so. So instead of calling it C, they called it do. And a lot of people told me, oh, that's just going to ruin them for life. Um, and I'm not just talking about like other moms. I'm talking about like Mary Margaret's violin teacher. She's like, oh, she has to say C. She has to see that note in her head and think C and then play the C. And I was like, well, I played the flute, and I would see the note, and I would feel a finger pattern. I never saw the note and thought, oh, that's a C. I need to play a C now. I saw the note, and I just did my fingers. Anyway, as long as it comes out, it doesn't really matter how you're, you're processing it, in my opinion. Um, so anyway, so I finished this blanket, and I decided to start... Um, another of her blankets called the hydrangea blanket and it has this pretty shell pattern and I'm waiting on some thread I didn't order the thread pack because um, I've got so many of the colors just from other projects or having ordered it that I just ordered the ones I needed but I need the peach that goes on top now I've also seen someone do this where instead of stacking these shells they interlock the shells so um, it's just going to be a lot of soft colors. I thought that would be nice for spring. So, Attic 24. I'm 13 minutes over an hour. I've talked piffle at least twice. Um, I'm sorry that I refused to do a whip parade, but I hope that you got an eyeful. Um, I hope you saw some things you liked. I hope you got inspired at least to go and look at um, Ellen Chester with my needle. Um, go and ask the sampler girl for all her old charts. <laughs> I bet Tanya will love that. And um, go and look at the Attic 24 um, site. Um, you don't have to use. I get Stylecraft Special DK. It's a very nice acrylic yarn. I order it from England because it's cheaper. It's cheaper to order it from England. The shipping is so much cheaper than if you were to order it in America. Um, I think, oh, the last exchange rate I saw when I ordered mine, I think it, they were like, oh gosh, I can't even remember. I mean, it was like 50 cents cheaper a ball to order it from England. The shipping is cheaper. Um, but you don't have to use that. You don't have to use DK. You can use Worsted. You can use Vanna's Choice. You can use um, whatever you have. Um, but it's just it's just nice to try a different pattern. Um, my friend Angela is doing the hydrangea pattern, but she chose her own colors um, that matched her bedspread. Um, so I got stuck here because I'm waiting for the peach that goes on top. So I thought, I'm just going to wing it. I'm just going to make another neat wave pattern. I'm just going to pick my own colors. I did about five rows and I realized it looked like a Lisa Frank notebook from the 80s. And I thought, no, no, you're not picking your own pattern. You're not, you're not, you need to wait for the, the chart, the color pack, Michelle. You can't wing yours. So, all right, I'm done talking piffle. Um... And I will see you next time. Bye.